Jonathan Turley, brilliant, I think he's at GW, legal scholar, also a Fox News contributor, we won't hold that against him, was just on Fox saying this, I want to show you. Judge, I want to bring in Professor Jonathan Turley, who has been in the courtroom today, so you're fresh out of there. Can you give us any of the flavor? Because when we thought that the court was going to break for the day, it seems like President Trump and his team seemed relaxed, uh, that he was smiling. Maybe they thought, okay, this jury is still struggling, they're going to leave tonight not having made a decision. Then we get word that verdict is coming in. What can you tell us about the mood inside the courthouse? It was one of the most bizarre moments I've had in a courtroom, and I was just observing. Uh, the judge had just said that the jury could not reach a decision and that we would be dismissed for the day. Some reporters actually gathered their stuff and were starting to leave. Uh, and then the judge came and basically said, my mistake, we just got a note saying there's a verdict. Uh, throughout this time, you could feel the building pressure in that courtroom. The one person that didn't seem to register it was uh, the former president. He had been chatting with counsel. He didn't show any emotion at all uh, as this mantra of guilty verdicts was read. And there was a great, you know, I think that this is one of those things that is uh, really embodies the entire Trump era. There were people who clearly were thrilled by the result. And there were people that will be very sad by it. I was saddened to watch it. I, I disagree yeah. with this verdict. I think, as I've said before, that this case uh, was legally unfounded. Uh, when they were reading those guilty verdicts, the one thing that we didn't know is really what he was found guilty of. Because if you remember, the judge <laughs> exactly. allowed the jury to find guilt exactly. on any one of three secondary crimes. We weren't told whether the jury found any one of those crimes, whether they found all three of those crimes. I'm not too sure we will know that. That's one of the many issues that I think presents reversible problems in this case. So what I would say is that this is a historic moment. We all have to take a breath. But for those upset by this verdict, remember this remains a country committed to the rule of law. and. This is going to go up on appeal. I think it's going to be reversed in the state or federal systems. But it's moments like this when you're on the other side, when you disagree with a verdict, that you have to take a leap of faith in the rule of law. It's what defines us. Many people feel that this case really embodied the antithesis of that. But as a country as a whole, we have a system in place to review this. For Donald Trump, that's not going to happen before the election in all likelihood. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's keep in mind that this is not the only court. It's just the first one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, think about that. That's exactly what they wanted, right? This is exactly what they wanted. They wanted to be in an environment where they could say, okay, he's guilty. He's guilty of something, and we we're going to sentence him. Sentence him days before the GOP convention. I mean, wow. The, the, the optics of this are really, if you ask me, quite bad, quite bad, actually, for the other side. Because as Turley points out, we are a, we are a country that believes in the rule of law. And so this is why when Rachel Maddow says, oh, the appeal doesn't matter, let me tell you, it matters. It's everything because you got to have some adults in the room. And I think all of this stuff gets turned over in appeal. Let's see. Oh, there's a Biden Harris campaign statement. Lo and behold, from today in New York today, they write, we saw that no one is above the law. Donald Trump has always mistakenly believed he would never face consequences for breaking the law for his own personal gain. But today's verdict does not change the fact that the American people face a simple reality. There is still only one way to keep Donald Trump out of the Oval Office at the ballot box. Convicted felon or not, Trump will be the Republican nominee for president. So this is what they're going to use. This is what they're going to use, of course, over and over and over again. He's a convicted felon. Therefore, you cannot vote for Donald Trump. The threat Donald Trump poses to our democracy has never been greater. He is running an increasingly unhinged campaign of revenge and retribution, pledging to a dictator on day one and calling for our Constitution to be, I mean, this is just unbelievable, terminated so he can regain and keep power. A second Trump term means chaos, ripping away Americans' freedoms and for 
fomenting political violence and the American people will reject it this November. Are you scared yet? Because that is what they are trying to do. They needed this conviction. They wanted this conviction so that they could say he is a convicted felon. There you go. You can't possibly vote for the guy. It's game over, except I don't think it is.